I'm Trevor Loudon. I'm the author of the book, The Enemies Within, Communists, Socialists and Progressives in the US Congress, and the writer of the new, new DVD, the new movie that's just come out, The Enemies Within. What we do is deal with those people who are working inside your Congress and inside your Senate to bring America to its knees. We say there's at least 100 members of the House of Representatives and, a, and 20 members of the Senate who are so enmeshed in communism, socialism or Muslim Brotherhood terrorist front groups that they couldn't pass an FBI check to sell you stamps at the post office or drive a school bus. Yet they're serving on the Homeland Security Committee, the Armed Services Committee, the Intelligence Committee, and they're trashing your country every single day, betraying your troops overseas, betraying this country. To see the DVD, if you want to see the DVD, go to enemieswithinmovie.com. That's enemieswithinmovie.com. And the book, you can go to Amazon. Look for enemies within communist, socialists and progressives in the US Congress or go to my daily blog trevorloudon.com. Order it online. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate the opportunity. You know, if you want to win a war, you have to know your enemy. And so you can buy one copy, you can buy 10 copies as bulk discounts. We want a couple of million people to see this before the election. And we're doing a whole bunch of media, but the grassroots are really what's going to help. But look, any uh, any questions at all? Your hand went up so fast, it was the speed of light, but yes. Uh, yeah. uh, I have an argument. When I went to Russia, maybe you could tell me, Trevor, I don't understand this. They want control, they want money, but why do they want a civilization that doesn't have enough food, like when I went to Russia, they all use the same juice machine with the same glass that they just washed out at the machine. The toilet paper was either sandpaper, a little square of thin toilet paper, and they were taking away our food. We had come from Ramstein Air Force Base. I had to be briefed and debriefed by the OSI to go in. Now, maybe you can tell me there was no food. They wanted my food, and I talked back to them, of course, and didn't give it. Well, I think the question is, why do these guys want to produce a society that is just impoverished and lack of freedom or whatever? Some communists will tell you, and I've talked to a lot of them, they'll say, well, the only reason Amer you know, socialism failed in Europe or Russia is because America sabotaged it, because America bankrupted them. So therefore, for socialism to succeed, you have to get rid of America. Some of them will say that. Other ones, I think it goes back to uh, Milton, Paradise Lost. Why did the devil leave heaven? Because he would rather rule in hell than serve in heaven. They just want power. They don't give a damn what happens to you as long as they're running things. Ever seen an impoverished communist dictator on this, on this planet? Fidel Castro is the richest man in Latin America. Kim Il Jong or whatever is, got, is loaded. They, it's all about power and people say communism doesn't work. It works beautifully because communism is about concentrating all the power and wealth in a very few hands. It's nothing to do with spreading the wealth or giving everybody a fair go. It works beautifully, but we just don't understand what its objective is. Any other questions? Question about the little I'm from Czechoslovakia. I spent 33 years of my life in communism. And here is one thing. In 1948, communists started nationalization, yeah. which is taking means of production from private hands and giving them to state. And this worked, you know, uh, it, it, it went from wall to wall. In 1989, communism in Czechoslovakia collapsed. You know why? Because there was nothing left to steal. <laughs> That's why it collapsed. Yeah. So they adapted capitalism. Who became the new captains of capitalism? The communists. The communists. Yeah. Because they had the money, they had the connections, 
they had the organizations. President of Czech Republic is a former communist. Okay? Yeah, yeah. This cancer is metastasing all over the world. It's not that cancer was not defeated. Right. The cancer survived it hosts. Yep. Okay? And during 33 years of living in a communist country, I developed a keen sense of recognizing a communist when I see one. I recognize the vocabulary. I recognize the verbiage. When I saw Nancy Pelosi throwing her claws into the air and yelling about Tea Party, how reactionary! I got goosebumps. When communists wanted to demonize somebody, they labeled him reactionary. They would put into your personal file, which went with you for whole life, an essay, hails from a reactionary family, or expresses reactionary opinions. Your kids would never get to the college, okay? Yeah. With that mark on their forehead. And I can hear the same words from Sanders. Hillary Clinton, same song. Folks, it's scary. Right. Right. And ask people who defected from communist countries. They're scared to death. In my worst nightmares, would I ever imagine when I was defecting that I would have to oppose communism again in America? Yep. of all places. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you very much. By the way. Well, thank you. Look, it's, uh, look, and you, you, you know, you don't have to tell people from Czechoslovakia or Romania or Cuba what's happening here. They see it. And I've talked to many people like you, sir, and they say exactly the same thing. They're tearing their hair out because Americans haven't had the experience you've had. And it's just, it's tough. So we hope this movie will enlighten at least a few of them to, to get them to understand. Um, you, sir, then you, sir. that you're saying is true and that he's saying is true is because of the work that you guys are doing. You guys are heroes. You are the canaries in the coal mine. I thank you so much for what you're doing. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, I, I really do, you know, because um, I grew up next to a Polish... When I was a kid, I grew up next to a Polish man who lived under the Nazis and under the communists. And he told me all he experienced and, 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 and I know when you say what you're saying, you mean it because I, I felt that intensity from him and I feel that intensity from you guys. So your words do mean a lot to me. One quick question, sir. I know it's scary, but let's assume that Hillary Clinton does become president. And not only that, but the Democrats also take control of the House, the Senate, the legislator and the legislature as well. The judicial. And the judiciary. What does that mean for our system of governance where we have 50 states that each have their own constitution and their own national guards? Are we, are we going to lose all that and we're just going to go to one federal yes. centralized republic with yes. 50 They'll different provinces? It. Well, that, that's their plan and that's why, that's why the massive campaign right now to demonize the police. The police are all racist. The police beat, kill black kids because they, they, they want an excuse to federalize the police. That's right. So you have a federalized yep. USA police force, not, a, not an Ohio police force or a California police force or whatever. So you're right. And I'm just, you know, the election, we got to win this election. But you're right. There is always a possibility we won't. I hope if they, we don't, we at least hold the Senate. I think we can hold the House. But if you lose the Senate, there goes the Supreme Court. So look, the, things, are, things are pretty dire. But I just want to say, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm talking as a, as a secular guy here. You know, America never should have been founded. It was a bunch of farmers and lawyer, farmers and blacksmiths and fishermen took on the world's greatest military empire. They took them on and they beat them. Yep. You can't tell me there wasn't a bit of divine help there, folks. Yep. You know, there yep, was. Exactly. And um, whether you're an atheist or a theist or whatever you are, this is our special country. 
and the American people have a special character that you do not see anywhere else. So I will never give up on this country. I think this country will always come through. But let's reduce the suffering and get back to the good stuff. You know, how long did it take Ronald Reagan to sort out Jimmy Carter's mess? Well, how long could the next president take to sort out Barack Obama? You imagine if they, they opened up the energy fields, they cut the regulations, how much of that $17 trillion overseas would come back into America overnight? When those young Bernie kids started actually having jobs and careers and futures again, I think they'd forget socialism pretty quickly. Yes. You know? And how many 60s hippies are in this, right in this audience right now who became good conservatives because of Ronald Reagan? I bet there's more than one. Yes. Yep. Right well, a, there was a gentleman right over here. here first. You, sir. Yeah. Yes, hi. How are you? I escaped there, and I can only say we left everything. You know, my father was fairly wealthy. We had a lot of property. We left everything just because we wanted to be free. The harassment. There are some people in communism who do well in Nazi elite, and they live behind fences and when they shop, they get their own shopping. No, well, that's like, all I want to say. Anyway. Yeah, look, I, and I, I, you know, I understand you. Some of us have, you have lived under socialism. I lived under soft New Zealand socialism. I believed it all. I believed all of BS, you know. But some of you have lived under the hard stuff, and and lived to tell a tale. Gentlemen down. Okay, two more. This gentleman, then, then this gentleman over here. Yes, sir. My name is Max Sergienko. I'm from Russia originally. I'm from Russia originally. Uh, very interested in this documentary. I, I'm trying to understand. Maybe you can explain further the, the dynamic of whom the forces of Islam decide to ally themselves with. Because the historical perspective that I have on this is that in the Cold War period. It was in the interests of the United States to keep the as many allied territories from falling communist. So in the interest of fighting the Cold War, the United States wound up sponsoring mosques, promoting Islam in places like Saudi Arabia to make sure they never fell communist. And because because uh, supposedly, uh, you know, Islam was antithetical to an alliance with communism because communists were godless; they were they were heathens. But but now, supposedly, this 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 alliance has switched. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a good question, and you know, why why did how how can you have an alliance between godless? Islam and uh, no, theist Islam and godless communism. Well, you know, the, the, the communists had no problems having an alliance with the Nazis before World War II. They were right in with the Nazis, working together. That was easy, fine, no problem. Now, in the Soviet, old Soviet Union, you had a lot of territories, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, that were Muslim. And just as the Soviets took over the, the, or, or, the Russian Orthodox Church, they also had to take over the mosques. Because they knew these were a big population that if they didn't control them, they could have a counter-revolution on their hands. And a lot of the Muslims fought with the whites against the Reds in the Russian Civil War. So just as, you know, who's heard of liberation theology in, in Christianity? Yeah. Well, that is, that is Christianity, that is Marxism with a Christian veneer. And that is what has enabled the communists to take over much of Latin America. They tailored their message. When they were communists, they made no headway in Latin America. When they pretended to be Catholic, they did well. So they've used the same strategy in the Middle East. 
Um, Eon Pachepa writes in his book, um, Disinformation, former head of the Romanian KGB, talks about how he got together with um, Andropov in the 1970s, the head of the Soviet KGB, and they sent 400 communist agents into the Islamic world armed with anti-Semitic and anti-American literature to spread their hateful message. The, the leader of Al-Qaeda was trained in Russian training camps. ISIS, there's a very good case that ISIS was set up by Russian military intelligence. You know, there has been a battle in the Islamic world between the American forces who wanted to use Islam as a buttress against communism, and the communists have been infiltrating Islam as well. Like the Iranian revolution was started by the Iranian Communist Party, the Tudeh Party. Then it was taken over by the, Mus by the, by the um, Shiites, by the, by the clerics, and they killed all the communists. But they still work with Russia. You know, the, the Egyptian revolution we saw recently, the, it wasn't the Muslim Brotherhood that started it, it was the Egyptian Communist Party, and the Muslim Brotherhood was put into power with the help of the U.S. State Department, by the way. So there is an alliance there. And I don't say every, is, every Muslim is pro-communist, that would be stupid. But a lot of these organisations are working with the KGB and always have worked with the KGB. They're a battering ram against us. One more question, sir. Yep. Okay. Well, look, you're absolutely right. And uh, we are trying to get into the universities. We want to tour the movie around the universities send it into the Democratic clubs, the Republican clubs. We're also working with a lot of churches to get it into their church groups. Um, I think, you know, young, there's always a few young people are going to be involved. Most young people will stay to one side, but we've got to cultivate that core of young, young revolutionaries who are going to carry this on in the future. And we're definitely trying to reach out to them, there's no question. But unfortunately, up until now, see our side, look, you look at the Republicans, they've got the greatest message in the world, freedom, prosperity, the Constitution, spreading liberty across the planet. And they spread, they talk about gross national product figures and um, they sell it the most boring way they possibly can. The Democrats have a message of poverty, dependence, racism and abortion. And they sell it in terms of liberty and fairness and justice for all and spreading the wealth. So who, who are the young people going to go towards? We have to do what Reagan did, speak to the heart. You know, because what, what, what do most people vote with, this or this? That's the reality. We've got to talk in idealistic terms. Reagan didn't talk about gross national product figures. He talked of a shining city on the hill. He talked of peace through strength. He talked of spreading liberty across the globe. And that's what got the young hippies going conservative. That's what got them fired up. That's what got those surfers off the California beaches like Dana Rohrbacher and into the Congress. You know, so there's no simple answer to it, but we've got to be idealistic and we've got to be brutally honest. I want young people to see this because there's no patronising here. There's no condescension. We're telling it like it is. And I think young people respond to that. But I just, well, thanks for all the questions. I just, please, I want you to get the DVD. You know, I want you to take it. Take it to your church. Take it to your Republican club, your Jewish group, your, your golfing buddies or whatever. We want you to take this movie and show it to some friends. Because that's the way. We're going viral the old-fashioned way, folks. You know, word of mouth. We're doing it the electronic way as well. But, um, you know, we also want you to pick out your top radio hosts, you know, who you listen to, Rush Limbaugh or Hannity or whatever, and we want you to tweet them. We want you to Facebook them, send them messages. You should be promoting this movie. If they get enough, you know, things in their inbox like that, they will get on board with it. Because we've got a lot of media on board, but that very top, Tia has proven a tough nut to crack so far. And any help we, you can give us on that is much appreciated. But, um, yes, ma'am? Friends in the audience.
a lot of patriots. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. There's still cake, there's coffee, there's tea. We still have the bar, open cash bar. And I, it's, I hate to do it, but I have to do it. American Freedom Alliance can't exist and do the things that we do without your help. Please grab an envelope or find us online. Help make all this possible. We're starting a, a donations drive, $5, $10 a month of a commitment would make a huge difference to this organization. We would so appreciate it. This kind of programs that we do, our Heroes of Conscience Awards dinner, the last conference we had on Islam, we're planning two next year, bringing Trevor here with his amazing movie. We can't do it without your help. Please grab an envelope and of course, all right. Thank you everyone. Have a great rest of your evening. Enjoy the company um, and thank you for coming out. <laughs>